Hi everyone and welcome to Vintage Digital Watches. Today we are going to do a very technical video that has been requested. We are not going to see a digital watch, so if you're here for that, sorry. But with what we are going to do is talk about the construction of the Seiko Data 2000 coil. Since I posted the video of that coil fix, many of you wanted to know how I build a coil. So here we are. On my workbench you see all the tools and materials that we need. I am going to go briefly over each one right now and afterwards we'll do a detailed description and do the whole rig and uh, start building a coil. We'll start over here. So this is the main spool holder. Uh, this will hold this spool as I unwind it. This is uh, insulating lacquer and I use this to apply to the coil that I'm making just to give it strength so that it holds its shape. This is a brush as you've seen, a paintbrush and this is what I use to apply the lacquer to the coil that I'm making. This is baking paper, uh, you'll see what I use this for but it's like uh, paper dipped in uh, candle wax. This is the raw material, uh, the coil wire. It's 0.025 millimeters wire and uh, I bought this on eBay. I don't know if you can find it still, but I've tried even other sizes. This seems to work the best uh, in terms of what geometry and resistance you want to achieve on the final coil. Now these are the most important tools and they are homemade. Basically this is like, uh, and this is the most important one, this is like a pulley that you can disassemble and reassemble and its job is to form the coil. You can imagine the coil will sit right there as we wind it up. So this is, let's call it the coil former. And this, this rig is a place for the coil former to sit on while I do the winding. The coil former will sit on this shaft and I slowly wind it up. You do have to do that operation under a microscope, so you're also going to need that. Okay, so while we are forming the coil in the former, there has to be a means of removing the coil when we're done. Um, and if we were to build a coil straight on the former, we would have no means of removing it after we're done. Moreover, we're applying conformal coating while we're winding up the coil and it will stick to this copper part of the former. So we need a protective layer in between the former and the coil that we are winding up. And that is where the baking paper comes in. So we are going to do two templates for each side of the former, one on this side, one on this side, well, essentially to protect it from to protect the coil from sticking on this side and on this side. We're also going to do a thin strip that will cover this part. So that is what we wanted to achieve. Um, I will proceed inserting now the screws, the bolts, and I will pull this apart until we have access to the track that is right there on the bottom. So we can insert a thin strip uh, of baking paper there as well. Okay, so now I've marked there and there where we have to do a thin strip and we are going to have a strip of 1.5 millimeter uh, that will be able to fit here. 
and now we'll do that cut uh, and you can't see me cutting because of the angle of the camera but essentially I'm cutting a 1.5 millimeter strip out of this baking paper so there we go now we will fit this right down the middle on the track beneath and this is a very fiddly job I will be doing it under the microscope so let's do that As you can see, we've cut a small opening here. That's where the wire is going to come out at one end when we start winding it up. And that's also where we're going to finish with the other end. Okay, so here we are and we are about to do the rig. This is more like a stand for the former that will sit on this shaft and it's a way for me to precisely rotate this. Basically, it's a block of wood with four wooden supports on which I uh, screwed in some uh, of these rollers. I think they're made for furniture, so you can easily move it around. And it also has this piece of metal which acts like a stopper. By the way, this is pointy at the end because I want as little friction as possible and this will stop into that piece of metal so there shouldn't be much friction there. Now we are going to fix the prepared former onto this shaft and we are going to fix it with a screw that goes into that hole which will make it rigid with the shaft. So that's how this thing is supposed to run. And we'll sit that under the microscope. Now as I said this is a holder for the main spool and I have uh, also this shaft and I will take this spool of coil wire and just make sure I don't know if you guys can actually see that wire it's very very thin must be careful not to drop this if I drop it there will be no more wire and I will sit it here and basically this is it I will be looking in the microscope and slowly guiding the wire as I turn this. That's how we are applying the conformal coating. So now we've got the coil complete and what I will have to do is from time to time rotate this such that whatever conformal coating I've applied at the end doesn't drip into a single spot so I will be turning this uh, every five minutes and I will leave that to dry for about a day and then we will proceed to removing the coil from the former. So now we are 24 hours later and it's time to remove the coil from the former 
and for that we must remember that we pulled out the ends right about there and we have to take those out first. Two perfect ends and now we will remove the bolts that hold the former together and then we'll try to do the most delicate part and that is remove the coil from the former. Hopefully it will stay together. Oh, and there we've just parted, it, parted the two uh, well, sides and uh, I should have done this under the microscope, but it seems that let's see if it can focus. It seems to hold pretty well, and it hasn't stuck uh, on the waxed paper. Just pull it back gently, so I can push out this bolt. Okay. And now for the moment of truth. There we go, that's one piece of the coil. And you can actually see, because I didn't stick in any way the underneath sheet of paper, uh, it does have some irregular shapes, but that's no worries. Once I will set it inside the watch, it will have a perfect shape. Just make sure. And that is the coil on the former. Here we can just slightly see the two ends. And now for the tricky part, and I will do this, well, the more trickier part, and I will do this under the microscope. It's pushing it out of the former. Essentially, I will just try to slide it. If not, I'll try to pull out the paper underneath. And I will lightly do a push with my finger and under the microscope I will see how rigid it is and we've got pretty good rigidity and if I do slight pushes I can also see it being moved to the side away from the former it's important not to use tools here that might damage the coil because it's very very fragile at this point you can actually see how I slided the coil off the former in that direction and I think we've got it I'll just drop it in my hand and there we go yes and that my friends is a complete coil I will have to remove the inside paper. And there we go. Now we have a complete coil. And it is pretty rigid. The conformal coating has done its job. And there we go, 3.7 kilo ohms, right in the range that we want to be. So we have a successful coil. Um, so yeah, that's how it's done. Oh yeah, and another thing, I know people will also ask this, is how many turns did you do? Well, the terms depend on the type of coil you do because uh, if you use a certain gauge wire, uh, the mathematics will say that you have to do a uh, different amount of turns. But for the 0.025 wire that I have, 
with the geometry of this wheel you have to do around 1200 turns to reach that uh, just saw that 3.7 kilo ohm was it and it has to be within the 3 to 5 kilo ohm range although if you do it around 2 kilo ohms or 3 kilo ohms uh, it might work with that as well so um, you can do a smaller coil but I like to stick within the margins uh, so that's why I did so many turns so basically that is how you form the coil for the Data 2000 and uh, I am not going to do the assembly in the watch because I've already did that in another video and I don't want to duplicate uh, what I do in the videos. Uh, they are lengthy as they are. Uh, so this is where we'll end. But I know many of you will want to know the dimensions of these things. So I will quickly go through the two dimensions uh, that I believe are the most important. And bear in mind that uh, if you want to replicate this, you will have to take into account the thickness of the paper that you are using. So it is, and this is in millimeters, 23.41. And that's in width 1.58. So those are the geometries of the coil. Thanks for watching this video and uh, I will see you on the next one when we will be reviewing the Casio transmitter watch. That's a video that I've been working on for a bit. Uh, I know many of you will enjoy that because it's such a unique piece. Until then, bye.